Richard, guys, welcome to Survival Chicks episode two. This is my friend Richard. So happy to have him today. Richard is like an expert on so many of the prepping things. I'm always asking him how, why, what to do. He's got the gear, really awesome stuff. So today he has agreed to come and talk to us about a bag, a bag, a bug out bag, if shit were to hit the fan type of bag, if you were to find yourself in a disaster or an emergency situation and you wanted to leave home or you wanted to get back home, what kind of things would you want in your bag and why? We're pretty much going to discuss that. We're going to be talking about food and water the most important, and shelter, how to keep warm and dry. We're also going to touch on protection and some really important things like medical or pharma, as well as communication and a little bit of administration stuff too. So thanks for joining us today. Hey, it's my pleasure. It'll be fun. Yay. (laughs) Indeed. So why don't you tell us a little bit about you and sure. why you know this stuff? Where did you come from? What kind of things so, did you go through? <laughs> um, so, I, I mean, there's my whole interest in this uh, has been lifelong. I, I have a, a regular job type job outside of this. Um, I work in film, but when I'm not working in film, I have basically grown up out in the outdoors, thanks to a dad who was actively involved in environmental protection and hiking and rock climbing and so on and so forth. So my sister and I were introduced at a young age. And then um, when I turned 13 years old, I was introduced to army cadets and that just furthered my interest. And I did that from 13 to 19. And um, I have to say that that organization just uh, solidified my love of the outdoors and my, a lot of the lessons that I learned in uh, army cadets. I, it sounds a bit corny, but I, I, I still use those lessons today. Um, hey. So we had a thing in army cadets called the patrol team where we learned patrolling and uh, preparing your survival belt and all that kind of stuff. And then that just rolled over into my adult life where, you know, s- my whole life, basically I've been camping and whenever I go to the bush, I always thought it'd be fun to build a shelter and, you know, do some bushcraft and, If it's pissing rain, I'll try to light a fire and just, you know, just practicing those, those skills so that, you know, not for anything other than the fact that I enjoy it for one, it's because I do this because I enjoy it, but also I'm aware of the fact that these skills could come in handy at some point. Anytime. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And I, I, I think it's important to mention as well is, is that just because I've been doing this my whole life, it's never too late to start doing this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and, and in, if you uh, shift from a uh, I'm scared uh, mindset and mentality and disaster is impending and so on and so forth, then shift your thoughts into, well, it's not happening right now, but maybe, you know, getting uh, good at doing these skills and getting proficient at using these, these skills uh, can be fun if you're doing it with your friends. And if you're, if you're, if you have a network of, uh, of people in your freedom, freedom community or whatever, um, put a little get together, like have a dinner, uh, make, make your bags together, go out and test your bags together. It can be fun. And then it can feel like a boost in confidence once you know how to use your things, you have some more skills, you feel good about it. Right. One of the things I will say, like any training, um, and is, is it, it's a, first off, I'll mention something you just sort of touched on is, is it practicing this stuff will build your confidence in doing these things, building a fire, um, uh, learning what it's like to go for a five kilometer hike in the pouring rain with just your stuff. I mean, not a lot of people have know what it's like to be uncomfortable out there. Mm. And um, so it's important, I think, to know that this kind of thing, um, practicing these kind of skills, tricking your brain or changing your mindset into thinking, hey, this is actually a fun hobby that I'm doing. actually is inoculating you against the stress of okay now it's happening i love that you know now this is happening and it's not the first time that i've done it because i've gone out with my friends i've gone out with my group and we practice these skills Mm -hmm. 
And if it was fun at the time, if you can make it fun at the time, which why can't we make everything fun, right? We can inject right. some fun into all the things that we do. Yes. Even the things that we feel are like laborious and work and whatever. If we can just look at them in a different viewpoint, have a little bit of fun with that. Mm-hmm. And once it was fun the first time, it can also be fun in the real life scenario where we don't have to feel super all stressed out. Yeah. And we can just, we'll move better that way too. Yeah. Agreed. Most likely. Agreed. And uh, so if you're out, um, uh, if you decide, um, cause even, uh, I mean, I take for granted that, um, I've camped thousands of times in my life. Yeah. Uh, there's people out there that have not ever gone ever. camping ever. Yeah. So I think it's important that if you're going to embark upon this stuff is also, you have to embark on a commitment of getting out, getting out there, just trying this stuff. Yeah. And, um, at least for now, um, you can always go home if you end up right. getting out there and, and, you know, uh, you end up with your shelter soaking wet. You didn't do th- something correctly. Yeah. Your sleeping bag's wet. Everybody can have a laugh about it and know that you're going to be better the next time. And you can just go home, have a hot shower and, you know, have a chuckle about it yeah. and then make notes about what you're going to do differently the next time. Right. But I would highly advise that people um, just em- embrace the idea of getting outdoors as often as possible. That's a good idea. Yeah. I feel like working in film might have helped me with some of the things, like you said, some people have never been camping. Well, we've stood for how many hours in yeah. the rain outside, just getting poured on. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and knowing what it feels like when you're uh, supposedly top of the line rain gear fails and you have yes. um, what feels like a tap of water running down your so back. Good. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good, yeah. good feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, something I was going <laughs> to save until the end, but I will touch on now so that people who are listening can go, well, ha, I live in the city. I'm probably mm. never going to go camping. This, 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 this information and all the things in here and all the things we're going to be talking about directly can be applied to an urban situation as well. And can be applied to a suburban situation and can be supplied uh, uh, applied to a uh, rural situation. Right. Uh, it's all about where do I live and in, in a situation, what do I need? And a lot of the times this bag might be something that you just toss in the back of your car and um, all of a sudden your batteries run dry or right. you can't get a hold of a tow truck or yeah. you're five kilometers from home and you've got to walk home. Yes. You know, like it, it's it, it can be applied in any way. Yes. And I think that anyone who takes this the the the, the mindset of preparedness or survival and applies it to living in downtown Vancouver or living in downtown Toronto, there's tons of things that you can do Mm. that are still fun with your friends to be prepared. Right. Um, And you just run it like a, uh, like an exercise in your head. Um, We just happen to live in near the great outdoors here in the Pacific Northwest. So Mm -hmm. we have access to the forest and access, you know, right outside our back door. So that's how I have uh, my, 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 uh, my plan if I can't be here is to be in the woods. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I think that's, I've never done anything like this before. So I'm super excited to find out what goes in this bag. What I've done is because we live out in the middle of the bush, pretty much, I have tossed one of these bags, something like it in my truck underneath the seat. And I've tossed in a bunch of things that I think would be helpful in case my battery dies. I'm in the middle of nowhere Mm because it does, it could very well happen here. And I'm really far from home or any place Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm on the road somewhere far. Yeah. So I just tossed like a bunch of things that I think would be helpful, but I'm pretty excited to see what, what kind of things you've got in there. No. Yeah. Then we, we should, we can dig into it. Um, I think that it's, uh, we can just also say some people call it a bug out bag. Some people call it the shit hit the fan bag. Yeah. So I would say that it's a, just a preparedness bag, right. you know, it's just a being prepared. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, it, it's, it could be your emergency preparedness bag. Uh, I, I mean, my sister lives in Los Angeles and she, she's been, she's lived through a couple of uh, kind of scary earthquakes, nothing that's ever mm. brought a building down. But if this was sitting by the back door and the house started shaking, you grab this and you know that you and your uh, your family or your your, so your spouse or whatever ready. are ready. Yeah. Because you you don't want to be standing in your house coat on the street. Right. Without, without any stuff. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So okay. I'm happy to. Cool. So as I mentioned, um, and I think the, the I, I think the plan is is that as I go through this, I'll talk about each thing. I may have to refer to my notes, but um, what we'll do is we'll lay it out and this camera up here, we'll, we'll just uh, capture yeah. playing it all out. Let's do it. Um, 
First off, uh, I want to talk about the things that you touched on, which are um, the sort of the things you want to keep in mind. What are the things that you need to sort of survive and be comfortable? Food, water, uh, clothing, some shelter, warmth, uh, communications, and uh, a little bit of administrative stuff. So those things are the things that you should be thinking about when you're putting your bag together. The bag itself, uh, which I happen to just have this bag. This is just a bag that I have. I would recommend, depending on where you are and what your situation is, I would let your terrain and your 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 surroundings determine and uh, dictate what your bag looks like. If you predominantly live in down in, in a in an urban environment and you think that you may need to get out of that urban environment, I would recommend not going with a super tactical looking bag. Okay. Because it's going to be like a heat score. Okay. People are going to say that person's that person's ready. That person has stuff in their backpack. Okay. However, if you get, um, I'm not suggesting that people in the city should get a Hello Kitty backpack and, and and or anything like that. But something that's that looks civilian, that's muted colors, blue, you know, rust color, brown, gray, something very basic. Doesn't like a school bag like a school bag or a book bag, and they're yeah. not that expensive. Right. Um, I would suggest not. You see a lot of. Um, YouTube videos of people with their bug out bags. And they'll mention that their bug out bag when it's fully loaded is about 70, 75 pounds. It's like, that's way too big for a bug out bag. Well, it would be for me. Anyway. It would be. You it want it to be manageable. Heavy for me. Exactly. <laughs> you, yeah, it's very it's, 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 hard it's half of your weight. Well, it's, it's more than half your weight, probably. Yes. But um, uh, you <laughs> want the bag to be... Uh, a good size. This is a 30 liter. It's a great size. It can be made smaller by constricting the straps and stuff like that. And I can probably stuff a little bit more stuff in here um, if I needed to, but it's a 30 liter bag. It seems to be a good size for me. It okay. also makes it so that I don't go crazy and start trying to stuff the kitchen sink in here. Okay. You know, I have to be, this is a emergency bag. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking like bigger. I didn't understand how big 30 liter was. It seems yeah. to be pretty like, it seems to a good size. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So um, I, because uh, what I'll do is I'll go through the bag um, in no particular order. And then I think at the end, you'll have a, either a, 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 the ability for people to go to my Break list down. or whatever, because okay. uh, I'm just going to go through the pack yeah. itself. Um, so I'll start with uh, the two pouches on the outside, and then I'll unzip it and we'll lay all this stuff out. Okay. Yeah. And I will eventually group the stuff on the table in their particular, um, in their particular orders here. So on the outside here, I just have a tourniquet tucked into the side, and that'll go into with all the rest of the medical gear that I've got in here. I've got a tourniquet there, and you just a tourniquet. These are available. You can get the uh, the high end ones. I think they're like thirty bucks, or you can go on AliExpress and get one that's that's just as good for what we're going to be doing. And I'm telling AliExpress. you, AliExpress a tourniquet. Uh, a lot of civilians don't know about these tourniquets, but these tourniquets will save your life if you if you have a a, a bleed in a major uh, vessel of your body, okay. um, and you're if you're bleeding out, uh, okay. th this will have and they, they will help if somebody else if yes. you're first on the scene and you're yes. bleeding out. Um, and the other side pocket, anything that you see um, in my bag that's in a pouch. Um, will eventually go when I'm in an active situation, we'll go onto a belt. On the outside. So I, I either, I will have this pouch and a few pouches inside. I will actually have on my belt, which okay. is inside okay. and I'll wear my belt because even though I've got my bug out kit here, there might be a situation where I need to actually ditch my pack okay. and I have my bare essentials on my belt. Okay. So it just means I can go faster and right. be more nimble. Okay. But anyways, what I've got in here is my radio, radio indeed and i got a series a set of these motorolas um they're the kind that we use in the film industry i bought a set of these um they're good for a couple of kilometers they're on their own uh secure network um that that we all share and as i'll talk about later um because everyone in our little group has the same radio um radio buddies i am number five radio buddies it means that if we're even if we're just out on a hike we can talk to each other and it also means that we've tested how far they go and where we need to be in order to talk to one another but a radio on the outside and on the other side over here i have a can of bear spray and these are good against uh four-legged predators as well as two-legged two -legged predators. predators you will find um 
a few videos online where people will they'll they'll war game whether or not these are good to have and they'll pontificate about the pros and cons about whether or not you want to use one of these in a situation um I'm 200 pounds and I would use this against a person if they were threatening me. And if I was a woman trying to get out of the city or trying to, yeah. uh, I would definitely call this an equalizer mm. uh, because um, something that I learned a long time ago in uh, fighting classes and knife fighting classes and stuff is if somebody is attacking you, if I make the decision to attack you or you make the att decision to attack me, You've already, you're already there. You're already at a red. I'm probably in a mental state of like white or yellow, hopefully not ever just white where I'm just absolutely completely unaware of my situation. But if somebody's already at a red and they made the decision to attack you, you need something to, to bring them back down. And this will definitely change somebody's mind. Is it a little bit like pepper spray? It is. In this particular brand is, um, I believe this is the most powerful one you can get uh, for... Yeah, this is the most powerful one you can get that isn't military or law enforcement. Yeah. Um, it's frontiersmen. Um, I have been sprayed with this uh, uh -huh. in, in a course. Yeah. And um, it, it uh, fucks you up. Did you get it in your eyes? Oh, yeah, in my whole face you know, on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just to get a sense of what How it feels like. How long does it last? Uh, long enough that you're running away and that person is not thinking about attacking you anymore. Like a couple hours? Uh, no, no. Nope. Like you, you know, 25 minutes if you start okay. washing your face right away. Okay. Stuff. But the idea is, is that you're going to use yeah. this and then not sure. stick around. Yeah. Just curious how long, you know, you yeah. have to know what you're imposing. Not mentally. sticking around. <laughs> Water. I, I carry one of these bottles because they're everywhere. Okay. And I just happen to recycle them and I use them. They're, they're great. My whole sort of backpacking system is set up on, um, uh, on these, uh, on these bottles. And I also have inside, I have a purification system oh. that will allow you to cool. purify and recycle. The great thing about these is that they are available everywhere. And the system that I have, which is called the Sawyer squeeze system, the threads on the, th the Sawyer squeeze system are the same as these bo bottles. Uh -huh. So what I have is I have, in, um, I have a, a, a bottle or a bag for dirty water. Okay. And then I actually will put the Sawyer squeeze on this and this, and it will drip the, it'll filter the dirty water into my clean water bottle. So I just have one bottle that's dedicated to the dirty water or the bag that's dedicated to a dirty water. And then this will be my drinking water. Okay. Indeed. Okay. Okay. Um, moving on. And you can stop me if, I, if you have any questions. Okay. Yeah. So also in the top here, I have a tiny little light. Oh, Useful. Indeed. You can clip this on something if you're working. Yeah. Uh, they're small. everywhere. These are everywhere. It's not, they're not, they're not like a super fancy light, but this That's is like a backup one. light. And then it's not huge and bulky and you're carrying right. a big flashlight and it looks and pretty powerful. You can, if in a pinch, right. if your headlamp goes down, this is really my if backup. You're coming to interrogate somebody and you're just <laughs> yeah. okay. Exactly. Like, oh, I am Iron oh, Man. Stop looking at me. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Whatever right. you want. Whatever you want. <laughs> okay. So a light and then. Um, uh -huh. You've got the pack. The pack is a very subdued color already, so yes. I'm not too worried about blending in. If you happen to go for something that leans more towards a Hello Kitty bag, um, then what you want to do is get a pack cover. And again, these are available for $3.99. Okay, so you know what I was thinking on my way here, actually? I have a couple little bags, and yeah. they come with this specifically yeah. for the rain. It's a rain cover, right? And mine aren't as cool as this. Mine, like my orange bags, it's already orange. Everybody can see me. Mm -hmm. And then it comes with an even brighter orange cover. And I'm like, oh my God, that's if like I want to be rescued. That's great. Right. But it would be great if I could turn it around and it would be a subdued color like right. this so that I could just hide the bag. Right. So, so you can buy these outside of you can. the bag. So okay. this was three ninety nine. So you can buy a subdued uh, from, color. Yes. So what, what I have a subdued bag. So I went right. with a brighter color, and this would be used uh, for if I was lost and wanted to be found. Yes. Exactly. Um, the other cool thing about these things here is, they, and you can get. I mean, AliExpress. As much as I don't want to support them, their their cost of their stuff is so cheap. Right. For you know four bucks, you get a cover. Um, I picked up a couple of camouflage ones. I think one okay. of them is like a, like a, a sage green. And then I've got this orange one. Perfect. So you've got a subdued one for the rain and exactly. you've got one in case people need to And in it. a pinch, you can collect water with this. And, of, or you can put it on your head for a shower. You could, if you need it, if you have a lot of hair, <laughs> you could put it on your head for a shower, for sure. Um, you collect water with it or you can signal for help with it. 
Okay. And, and uh, I'll just put that back in. Great. Yeah. All right, then we're getting into some of the fun stuff. Ooh, okay. So in the other top pouch here, um, I have some- Narcotics. I have some, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, these are um, salt tablets. These are made by a company called uh, Salt. Uh, salt lift, I believe, or salt stick. I think it's salt stick. So what do you need those for? Electrolytes. Straight if you're salt. running for your life. Straight salt. No, no, they're not. They're oh. they're scientifically, they're called, they're made by the, the companies. It's to replace all, they're scientifically designed to replace what you're sweating out. It's your electrolytes. Oh, yeah. excellent. Okay. So every half an hour, if I'm sweating a lot, I'll pop one of those in my mouth and take a swig of water and you don't get cramps. It's got magnesium, potassium, all the things, um, all the things, salt cool. and so on. So I take some okay. of those with me. I always have a little notepad with me for, uh, yes, you, you never know. Like you yeah. might want to just write something down. Uh, you, you also you, you might want leave a note for somebody exactly. maybe maybe exactly. if your car broke down you leave a note on the car because right. if somebody finds it da, da, exactly da, da. and we, you know you've seen in the movies where somebody leaves a note on a on a, a street sign somewhere saying "Stu, i've gone to mom's or yeah. whatever um and the other thing is, is i would keep tucked in the back of your your book i would keep uh, your contact information your oh. your your necessary contact information okay. um because if your phone goes down, if you end up in a in the water or your electronics shit to bed, you want to have your mom's number, spouse's number, kid's number, you know, all the numbers that you That's have forgotten idea. because we're all dependent on smartphones. Because we don't have those numbers memorized. We do that not. That is for certain. We don't. No. Hey. Great idea. Something else I'll mention is, is that when we get into the big part of the bag, is it's an excellent idea to keep all of this stuff in, grouped into uh, compartments or separate stuff, stuff sacks and, and remember which stuff is in separate stuff sack. Okay. keep your fire kit with your fire kit keep okay. your, your, your and so on because it just helps keep things organized sure and if you ever needed to for instance like if if i was in a situation where i couldn't get to my bag and i had to send you to the car Ooh. you know to like which one is it you know and now you're dumping out the whole bag yeah. it doesn't that's not so good <laughs> so like women dumping out their person at the cash register looking for stuff <laughs> It's true. Um, <laughs> mind you, as a, now that you mentioned that, it wouldn't be, it would be a fun exercise. I'll, I'll just segue for a second. It'll be a fun <laughs> exercise to come out with a bug out purse. So like that, so I'm just going to grab something off the wall here. Um, something that I have done is I've made a bug out fanny pack. Fanny packs. Which you never want to say if you're who, who tuning in from it? England. Uh, this is called a bum bag in England. They do not call it a fanny pack in Canada. But anyways, I turned. I just turned this fanny pack into a bug out thing, and I just put the absolute essentials in this, and I and I did that that way. So it's always fun to see, like, strip it down, strip mm -hmm. it down, strip mm -hmm. it down. This is really just like you want like a cross body bag so that it's yeah. holding on to us. We're not just like one shoulder yes. it. You can have some little pockets with special things in there. Mm -hmm. I've seen people do messenger bags, messenger, messenger bags. bug out bags, because that'll blend bag. it just a, a, a sling bag, Okay. you know, like a, a crossbody cross messenger body. bag. Yeah. Again, you blend in like every other college sure. student, you know, if you did or that woman. Yeah, exactly. Or woman. Um, <laughs> So in, the, in this case, in the top, this mm -hmm. is again, this is for me, I have a rechargeable headlight. Okay. Very important. A Phoenix headlight. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. And that you can, the good thing about these versus using batteries is that you can charge this headlamp off of your battery pack, the same battery pack that you're charging your phone with the same okay. battery pack that I use to charge my right. watch with and yeah. so on and so forth. And I also keep a pair of fairly you inexpensive binoculars box. because these, I believe, are seven power and just being able to be down the road and take a look and see or up on top of a hill and make sure that where you're going mm. is not crawling with bad people. That's a good idea. They're nice and tiny. Yeah. They fit in his little pouch there. And for shits and giggles, I went on to Amazon and I believe that you can get a monocular, which is a single version of one of those at seven power for about 15 bucks, you know? Okay, so yeah. seven power is like- what? It's seven times magnification. Yeah. Okay, or is it eight? It might be eight if, it's, if they're eight, yeah. Eight. Okay. Cool. And something else I just keep in because of who, you know, where I go, I always keep a little bit of flagging tape in my pack. Oh yeah. 
to Mark, <laughs> to Mark. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, Never seen uh, that before, really. <laughs> so um, I use this to mark where I've come from and to uh, allow people to possibly uh, follow where I'm, where I'm, where I am. So in a very pinch, smart. Yes, indeed. Very smart. A tiny little bit of this tied onto a branch that you know to look for. A lot of it, especially where we live in the Pacific Northwest, Northwest like logging companies use this. No one in a million years no. is going to go, oh, oh it Richard must be that. Here. Exactly. Richard so a little bit of flagging tape. Hey, that's a great idea. Um, flagging tape. So it's not sticky or anything. It's nope. just colorful. Where do you get this? Uh, Home Depot. Cheap, huh. cheap. I think it's Home four bucks a roll. Home Depot. Yeah. Excellent. And then on the outside of the bag, I have a little, uh, a little pouch um, that I keep my uh, car keys and any other little small items in. And then I have a pouch on my pack that I tuck my phone in when it is not being used as a B camera. So it goes in here. And then this lovely little guy right here is a pen flare slash bear scare. Yes. And it's, I honestly think everyone should have one of these and I carry it with me readily. This is, it sounds like a gunshot. It sounds like a, a, a gun going off and it's good for obviously scaring bears. Um, but they also have, and when we get into here, I'll talk a little bit more about the, the different uh, flares that you can get, but you can get um, colored flares as well for these that will launch 30 meters up in the air. So if you're in a situation, again, this situation covers shit hits the fan, emergency, I'm lost, a I, I need help, come and get me, you know. So if I was to hear somebody calling my voice or uh, if I was to hear dogs barking or if I was to hear a helicopter looking for me or whatever, you can pop that off. Right, or even in our area, because we have bears, obviously, we don't just have bears, we've got bobcats and cougars. Yeah. And so not that you're going to have time with a cougar probably, but right. important to have stuff like that. This um, works. Mm. I have personally used this against multiple bears, okay. not all at once, but um, <laughs> in the wild. And um, it also works for dogs, uh, uh, angry dogs. Okay. That, and sure. angry dogs, it'll just change their mind. Yeah, you know? it'll just freak them out yeah. a little bit. It, it, it's a reset. So it's a reset. You grab the little thing. So I will take this off. But anyways, this, again... Very reasonably priced. I believe it's 20 bucks for the whole kit at Cantire. And then you can replace those. This is the cartridge. Okay. It has a 22 caliber blank in here or okay. a charge in, in here. Okay. It goes, it gets threaded onto here. Yep. And then all you do is you pull that back. Yep. And that's a firing pin inside. And, let it go. and you let Bing. it go. And Whoa. if you are using it as a bare banger, uh, you arc, you basically point it um, at, in the vicinity of the bear and launch it towards the bear. And it goes pop and then there's about a two second pause maybe one and a half second pause before it explodes because it, it makes a very loud bang again essential piece of kit um essential my my early morning just as a emergency prepare guy when i take my dog up to the top of the property every morning this is the one thing i grab absolutely <laughs> like that's my bug out kit for the first thing in the morning that's on the property idea. So I'm going to put that right there. We definitely need some of those. Uh, and that covers everything on the outside. So now we're going to go inside. Oh, I see some fun things in there. Indeed. <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's... Uh, uh, this is, as I mentioned, and I'll probably say it a few times, this is um, set up for me. So. Yeah. I, you may not need this, but I do want this in my kit. Mm -hmm. This is my cooking kit. Okay. It's super small. Yeah. And inside here, you can boil dirty water if you had it or needed to. And it can sit directly in the flame too, can it not? Yes, it can, for cool. sure. So um, this also will double a little bit. I have a, a bigger kit inside here as a fire starting kit if necessary. Okay. But this um, pot... Um, can go directly on a fire. Um, this is the best little backpacking stove that, that you will ever find. That is amazing. They are cheap. They are available on Amazon and from various stores online. But that little guy there wow. is the smallest 
backpacking stove you're going to find and it just threads directly on top of your okay on top of your and um, this guy sits and that sits on top of that okay and then i have this uh, uh rigid tin foil stuff to create a little shroud around it so that all the heat is going towards boiling okay. and this guy here three minutes and you've got a boiling pot of water it's oh, cool. pretty wow. pretty amazing yeah okay like i said if you're just trying to make a run from in the city and you're trying to get out of town you might not want this with you but i definitely have this has come in handy and i enjoy cooking something you know making a, a cup of tea or hot chocolate when i'm out in the bush jet boil jet power so um if we would flick this yeah. so and this you comes would put up. that thing on so that just comes off yes and the camping on the thing. stove just goes on there and then what how do you start it that's a whole that's a whole video in itself is it um no okay <laughs> so um like i said like you you may not need this level of um stuff but a little camping stove can hurt yeah i heard it okay ah straight there look at that that's it let me shut it off oh you have the Wow. Yeah. This is ingenious. It is ingenious. So tiny. It is super, wow. super tiny. So cool. So I'll get that. Okay. Yeah. Again, super fun. Uh, if you, if you have it, it, just, it is really lightweight, putting a little, uh, a little kit together and you can go to an army surplus store and get a uh, canteen cup, you know, just a basic canteen cup for like $10. Uh, this one I got, I don't remember where I got this one, but it's titanium. I believe it's made by Tokes. And it is a, it's a pretty decent one. Tokes, um, indeed. And one of the reasons why I went with that pot is it allowed me to put my whole, either a small size or a large size kit so everything's together. inside here. Yeah, yeah, so it's one. all together. Got some little matches. And then it's all held together by this. Uh, it doesn't really elastic. snap. No, just held together by a big elastic band. Rocky band. Is that what that is? No, yeah. it's too big to be maybe. It's a lot of broccoli. I don't know. <laughs> and then when I'm, I, it works every time, except for when I'm doing it on camera. There we go. Yeah. There we go. So that's that. Also, I have a carabiner, uh -huh. which is on the outside Never of the, uh, outside when of you're the bed. you're going to use a carabiner. Um, this is, uh, the fancy name for this is a shmog. Shmog, oh, shmog. Is, an, uh, is essentially an Arab scarf or okay. some sort of scarf. It's great for a lot of things. If you if you're cold, you can mm. wrap your head. If you need to not be seen, you can do the old uh, head wrap with it. Um, you know, there's a lot of uses for it, but it's just coming. Sometimes what I do, I know this might sound a little corny, but I have um, this is freshly washed, so it doesn't have it now. But I usually put a little um, cedar wood and some oh, yeah. uh, sandalwood like uh -huh. on my hands, and uh -huh. I just kind of make that. So when I'm out in the bush, I put it around myself. I feel like oh, that's well, nice. So yeah, it's got some nice smell to it. I do know from going traveling, one of my friends introduced me to the scarf that we then named the towel blanket, and we used it for everything. Nice. So I have one. It's a little bit bigger than this. It's a little thinner. And really, like, I've used it to um, shade myself from the sun if I've had, especially if I've already got sunburn the day before because now I'm hurting. In, I'm carrying a backpack. I put it underneath the backpack so that my shoulders are all covered. Right. Especially if it's hot and I'm wearing a tank top and now I've got some friction going on. I can right. use it to lie down on the beach or whatever. I can use it for any kind of scenario. It comes in so super handy and they're super thin. You just roll them up and or put them around your waist or whatever. So totally. Super multi-tool tasking. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And, uh, you know, it, it can also double for if your head's cold, um, yeah. you know, you know, you, you can make a Jackie O scarf out of it and keep your head out of the sun. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. All the things. And all right, let's go all the way down there. Okay. All right. Mentioned earlier on about the belt. Okay. So I've got a, a strong belt. Uh, I use a different belt than my pants belt. Some people will maybe use a pants belt, but I want to be able to take this this belt on and off. Okay. So this is just a strong sort of um, uh, rigger's belt. That is what they call it. Uh, it doesn't have to be fancy. Could be a could be a leather belt. Uh, just as long as you have a separate belt to put the next few items on. 
And so the next few items that I have, again, this is just for me. I have a knife, I have multi-tool and what I call a boo-boo kit. The boo-boo kit is a smaller version of the medical kit. Okay. Um, and this contains things uh, like bandages and a couple Advil and things like that in case, or, uh, you know, uh, larger ba bandages from the dollar store in case my heel gets a blister on it or something like that. It's with me. And another reason, another reason why I, I keep that separate from my big medical kit, which we'll see in a sec, is, um, as I mentioned, is that there might be a situation where these things that I've already mentioned are separate for in separate pouches for a reason these go on my belt right this i might have to ditch mm -hmm. um maybe i'm standing out maybe mm -hmm. i need to go faster maybe i need to run for my life okay um this is this is a stripped down version of the, the whole bag basically well, maybe you would even just need to make space for exactly something. so in in a in a situation let's say like a shit hits the fan situation or survival situation or if i'm just going camping this comes out of the bag. This goes on my waist, no matter what. Okay. It's not. I don't wait until the shit's hit the fan. As Got soon it. as I'm, as soon as I'm uh, able to get this bag and put all these things on this belt, I put the belt on, you and do. now it's my my bat belt, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'll talk a little bit about the, the. We've already talked a little bit about the belt. Mm -hmm. Um, and we've talked about these things: communications and the tourniquet. So booba kit. Bandages, Advil, some small stuff, whatever you think you might need just to have on you. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, if you had to run for it, you know, like little, little personal medical things. And uh, like, right. if, and so if you, you maybe, need a puffer, yeah. if you need a, a puffer or if you have a heart condition or something, whatever you need, right. you should keep that with you at all times. Or if you wear contacts. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, uh, and then uh, next thing is a fixed blade knife. Um, it doesn't have to be a fancy fixed blade knife, um, but you should have a fixed blade knife. What and does fixed blade mean? Means a non folding knife. Non -folding. Okay. Um, this can be used. This is an old seal pup uh, that I got. It's a SOG seal pup knife. Um, and uh, it can be used to split wood. If you get another piece of wood, you can use this as a baton, just baton wood, and use it to split wood. You oh, can use it to, yeah. Um, you can uh, make shavings with it. And um, as much as, you know, um, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about a shit hits a fan situation. So you, you know, this is a defensive weapon, sure. you know, um, if necessary. If necessary. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's good that people get out there and actually handle it and actually know what it's like to split wood with it. Uh, um, you know, cut your food up with it to get to know it, get to know how, what, what it feels like and everything and know, uh, that, you know, um, it'll never, ho hopefully, hopefully it never happens. But if you're in a situation where you did have to hurt somebody that was trying to hurt you, um, then it needs to not be a folding knife. It needs to not mm. be a, a, a nail clipper or, or something like that. It needs to be a fighting knife. Okay. Um, so this is a fixed blade knife. <laughs> Multipurpose. Exactly. Now I'll segue now that we've mentioned the word knife and I'll leave this little space right here to show something else. This something that, I, um, that you'll hear a lot on YouTube and um, out there in the community of people that are into this kind of stuff is everyday carry or EDC and EDC for me and is a flashlight, which everyone should have and a folding knife. This is not, this is not my survival knife. Mm -hmm. This is just a, a utility knife. Okay. This is, I just carry that. I can't tell you how many times I use this stuff at work or every day. I don't care if it's opening up a package or, or whatever, Get, getting something out from between two cracks and something, just having a knife, uh, cutting rope, cutting string and having a flashlight. I did remember years ago reading an article, um, and they interviewed some people that had survived the subway bombings in London. And, um, multiple, multiple people said when they were asked what they wished that they'd had was a light because they were underground dark, and it was dark and it was nothing but smoke and fear and everything. Wow. And it was just having a light yeah. to say, okay, yeah. I found a way yeah. or follow me yeah. or whatever, having a light. These wow. are available anywhere. You don't have to spend a lot of money on anything like sure. this. Um, you can get a pocket knife anywhere. 
and you can get a decent um, pocket uh, flashlight anywhere. Okay. So that was a little segue on everyday carry stuff. Cool. So moving on, I have a multi-tool. Well, that's a pretty heavy duty multi-tool. It is a pretty heavy duty multi-tool. It's got your name on everything. It does. So this is a Leatherman Surge. This is a Leatherman Surge in black. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a great tool, a multi-tool, multi-things. It's got scissors, it's got a saw, it's got wire snips, it's got pliers, it's got everything on it. I highly recommend that people get a multi-tool. This particular one also comes with several uh, screwdriver Ooh, tips. attachments. And it also comes with a file and a saw. And wow. this, this just... I have a, I had a bat, an old pistol magazine pouch. Okay. Uh, so I just tuck it all into my pistol magazine pouch. Well, handy. And that goes on to my belt. Multi-tool. Multi-tool. All right. I'll keep the belt right there in the middle for now. All right. Next thing. Are we talking about clothing? Uh, we might know. I'm going to segue into the clothing right now as I take off my survival chick shirt. Nice. I wear the same shirt that Richard's wearing because Richard's cool <laughs> and I want to look just like him. This is where you have to, dra- <laughs> you have to drop in an ad for survival chicks, like uh, all your, your gear, all your stuff now. But mine's gold. It's true, <laughs> but your sweater is available for $29.99. You know? <laughs> um, okay. That's right. So the next, uh, the next uh, bag is this, yep. what, this is what I was saying inside here. Okay. I've got a, a bag full of, this is where I keep a lot of um, things organized that I wouldn't want to just dump into my pack. Oh loose. yeah. Organization is key. Water purification. Okay. We talked about that. Yeah. But I can show you it if yeah. you're interested. What kind? What do you got? Sawyer squeeze. Right. So the Sawyer squeeze, as I mentioned, is tied up in this little bag that if my hands were frozen, I would be dead trying to get it open. You would use your knife to cut cut this open and then they'd find my frozen ice corpse. (laughs) Unable to get hydrated. Exactly. Because I, how how did he die? Hang on a second. What's going on here? There it is. I guess I could have put my glasses on. (laughs) Richard's going to have a spare pair of glasses in his bag. Of course I am. Um, all right. Finally, how are we doing? Okay. So what we've got in here is the bag, my water bag for the dirty water. Sawyer squeeze. Sawyer squeeze. So the water that you get out of a creek or something. Yeah. This okay. actually, I know this is going to sound gross, but I have tested this. And you can go to a fetid swamp that looks like like it's full of shit and piss, and it will filter it all out. Yeah. So the way that this works is you screw the Sawyer squeeze onto here, um, fill your bag, uh-huh. hang it with your water bottle underneath, and it will drip over the course of yeah, over the course of mm, it'll fill this bottle in about fifteen minutes. Okay. Yeah. The other cool thing is, the other cool thing about the Sawyer squeeze is, is as you might notice, is that because it has the same threads as this, mm-hmm. if I was in a pinch mm-hmm. and I couldn't do all of this, yes. I could just get one of these from a garbage can or recycling bin or whatever, full of brown, disgusting water, screw this on here, and now you're drinking directly Swirl from the bottle. Your mouth. Yeah. Because of the way that the filter works and it is, it is getting rid of microbes, it doesn't, it's not like a like a drink, you know, like, oh, oh, yeah. like soak it's yourself. Just, it's, it's, it takes a while to, to, but you will get enough water. If you're on the run, yeah. you could run and just drink out of this. Okay. Yeah. If you, well, if you had cool. to. Yes, indeed. Sawyer squeeze. Sawyer squeeze. Again, readily available. I believe they even carry those things at uh, Canadian Tire. And the good thing about this kind of technology um, is this technology has evolved a lot. A lot of the gear that I have in my gear uh, area downstairs what was current 15 years ago these giant hand pumps that you have to drop something into the stream and uh, into the stream and so on and so forth that was uh, eventually replaced by the life straw mm-hmm. which pretty much ruled the world for 
um, you know, for years, for mm-hmm. about 10 years. And then that life straw technology was developed into this. And now they even have a Sawyer sque- a squeeze micro, which is actually smaller than this, but and this is still current issue. This mm-hmm. is current available, cool. but anyways, you can imagine it, that there's even smaller ones than that now. And, um, it's uh we're lucky because where we live in british columbia uh, we can just dunk our heads into streams and drink pretty much and i would never worry about that especially at this time of year when there's all this snow runoff and clean beautiful fresh water but when i go to the interior or go to the okanagan and i'm trail running in the summertime and all that's around are these things that look literally like an ashtray filled with beer at a party then then that's the, what they've got to drink out of the side of the trail um you can really? filter that out yeah no oh. All right, moving on from that, moving on from that, I have a um, a little bivy bag, a survival bivy bag, available anywhere. What is a bivy bag? A bivy bag. What is a bivy bag? <laughs> so this, this is a very, very basic survival bivy, bivy bag. What this is, is it's a mylar uh, blanket. Okay. Um, th- it's also got a very heavy duty um, poly sheet around it. It's not a breathable Right. thing it is designed to reflect your body heat back to you and, and keep your moisture and keep your and, and keep you warm in an absolute um sh- shit hits the fan situation yeah um these um uh, these are great it's uh, like a vapor barrier it is like it is like that and it's got the uh the silver fo- uh, foil on the inside and everything Correct. this is um uh, again more than likely this would get used on someone else uh because if you come across somebody who's Injured. Yeah, I've been first on the scene in the woods That's twice, right. three times, where I've had to help people with injuries. And one of the first things that happens is you go into shock, which means it doesn't matter if it's blazing sun, you're you y- you're you're going to start shivering because your body's redirecting all yeah. its uh, energy to the injury and to okay. you know you're going to go into shock. So a little survivor, so survi- survival baby bag. Okay. Um, some TP. Oh, no, nec- yeah. no, no, uh, no explanation necessary. No nonsense. Um, TP. Yes. And I wouldn't, I, I, yeah, TP and a little bit of paper towel. And then I have these little travel. Oh, um, I would just bring more. <laughs> right. Just lots more. I would just bring more. Um, and they, they all, uh, all these, th- these are great. These little travel, uh, you just add like a, a little uh, half an ounce of water and these turn into wet wipes. You can get these anywhere. Ah, you can yeah, get those okay. anywhere. Cool. Um, so those are, that's just great. TP, very obvious what that's for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would bring more because whenever I go traveling, I put one of those in my bag. And then if we're in places and we're in so many places, they don't have proper toilet stuff like we have here in Canada. And everybody's like, oh, Renee, can I have your toilet paper? Yeah. Renee, can I have your toilet paper? And I'm like, oh man, like, yeah, I'm out, fresh out. I have, a, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have, um, so I can't spare square. Uh, many years, many years ago, when I started trail running and and uh, was part of a group of people that were trail running, is um, there's this thing where like I don't have to bring any survival gear. You've got it. And I uh, gotta tell you, I gotta tell you something. I have been on the scene of injuries where I've been first on the scene where, you know, maybe it's a carryover from the military mindset and the military way of thinking is that. I should be using your gear to help you. You should be using your gear, my gear to help me. You should, everyone should have a bare minimum, even if you're trail running or whatever. And I have to say, I know maybe I'm, maybe I'm just being judgmental <laughs> because I can't be that way. But when I, I, I have like my trail running pack is tiny. It's like a tiny little pack. And I have everything I need to be first on the scene of a medical emergency, survive and, and be able to uh, signal for help. Nobody does that. A a few people do, (laughs) but what I'll see is I'll see, I'll be, for instance, when I used to run, when I lived in Vancouver, I I used to run in the North shore and I'd be coming back from a place like Norvan falls at two o'clock in uh, early spring or late autumn when it's going to be dark in three hours. And I'd see, um, a woman or a man in like little silky shorts and a tank top with their earbuds in um, going on a 17 kilometer trail run. And they're just starting now and there's no pack. There's no water. There's no snacks. There's no electrolytes. There's, that seems about right. There's nothing. Yeah. And 
you know, about a decade ago, they did have a guy that went missing and he literally didn't leave a note in his car. He yeah. went out in his wham shorts and his tank Nobody top. Knew, wham. Yeah. Nobody knew where he was. <laughs> yeah. No one knew where he was. And, and they found the only reason why they found him is because the uh, rescuer ended up stepping over a log and stepping on him. He had he'd hidden under a log and pulled moss and shit on top of him to try to stay alive. Yeah. Because he was an idiot. You know, you're an idiot. Like you don't, and the, you, you don't, this is another pet peeve. You don't get to high five and, and pat yourself on the back. If you pull your own ass out of a fire that you started, like you, you are, you owe apologies to everybody. If you're that guy who, you know, I didn't bring any water. I didn't bring any sure. food. I didn't bring an extra layer. Yeah. I didn't, uh, but I, um, I, I had my headphones in. So make sure that any wild animal for sure, oh, yeah. you know, can attack me. Yeah. Anyways, um, long story short is you should, you know, um, what, how did, how do we get stuck on this? Oh yeah. Like <laughs> what were we talking about? Uh, it was just toilet about paper. Oh yeah. Toilet paper. <laughs> ha- oh, having your own stuff. Like, you, right. you know, you know, cause people were borrowing your toilet paper. Yeah. It's like, no, you should have your own toilet paper. Yeah. Go find some toilet paper. <laughs> and I have some like little cream to kind of sanitize the hand. I'm not a big hand sanitizer, but like some cream to like clean off any potential germs after you go to the bathroom is not a terrible I don't know why you'd want to do that. And everybody wanted my cream. And I was like, well, sure. But at some point, there's not going to be any left. So. <laughs> I think that this actually is a nice spot to inject um, something that uh, is, well, I was going to mention at the end, which is part of the mindset thing. Is, is it just having the forethought to bring the hand sanitizer? If you were planning on bringing it for the entire tour bus, uh, then you would have brought a backpack full of hand sanitizer, but you brought hand sanitizer for you. You didn't bring a hand sanitizer for anybody that didn't sure. bother because they were busy thinking about, you know, drinking, um, you know, whatever. margaritas on uh, the sure. beach in Cabo yeah. or whatever. Whatever. They Anyways. Were. <laughs> uh, uh, judgment aside, uh, people judgment be aside. responsible for your own preparedness. Um, the next thing in this little uh, kit is a buff. It's a merino wool buff. Okay. It's just a head. It's a it's a yep. merino wool tube thing for obvious oh, reasons. Oh yeah, I love that. Yeah. Wear around my ears. My ears always yeah. get cold. My yeah. neck. If my neck is cold, we're in trouble. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. you could wear it as a tube top. You can wear mm-hmm. it as a mini skirt. You mm-hmm. can do whatever you want with it. But it's a merino. It's a merino wool buff for obvious reasons to keep your head and your and you can wear it as a hat. Survival mini skirt. Perfect. Exactly. Survival mini skirt. <laughs> I bring. Oh. I, I bring. When a, you're down the highway and you need to show a little yeah. leg. See that. See huh? that. The survival? The, exactly. You should think of that next time. I uh, believe me. <laughs> believe me, there's a reason why the guys always hide in the forest when they're trying to pick up a ride. And, you know, like, and uh, yeah, that is, ride. yeah, no one's ever going to pick me up at the side of the road. That's for sure. No, you can't but that they will sure. definitely pick you up, you especially if you're wearing your Marine. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It would have to be a very <laughs> weird dude or a very strange lady or whatever. <laughs> like, let's go back and pick up that guy. Yeah, that guy seems nice. Um, I have a little <laughs> microfiber towel, mm-hmm. travel towel, yeah. very small. And that could be used for anything. A lot of things. Okay. That could be used as a bandage. Mm-hmm. And if your friends need toilet paper, tell them to go cut up their freaking towel. Yeah. <laughs> their own <laughs> towels, not mine. These. These are what we're going to talk about. So these and these. Looks like those. Go together. They are. Yeah. Okay. Same, same. Same, same. Is this different? Those are the flares. Oh, fun. So we've got, these are the bear bangers. Yep. Uh, and these are the flares and it's, they all operate the same way. Obviously you don't want to point these, um, down. You want to point these up. Yeah. One is for scaring away bears and one is for, um, is there a difference between the caps here? Uh, you know what? I'd have to check. I think that there might be a color difference. Uh, I think one might be green. One might, one might be red. Uh, but I don't really think it matters. There is no, as far as I know, there's no universal red means, this green means, means that. Don't come get me. Yeah, I'm fine. Don't, don't. Just stay away. I'm fine. It means go away. It means go away. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. All right. Uh, I have a backup battery for hey. my radio. Yep. Right there. Mm-hmm. That's an obvious one. Now, here's an interesting one. Oh, so this bags. is two heavy duty contractor bags, not a if home. You're trying to dispose of a body. Ca- right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly what you would use these for is disposing of a human that you have stabbed with your fighting knife. Shh, no, I'm just kidding. So uh, heavy duty contractor bags. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, don't defend yourself. Um, bags. 
So contractor bags. In case you need to poop in the bag. No. no. <laughs> um, you could, I guess, if you needed to, you could it's poop in the bag. bag. You could sit in the bag for. You could <laughs> sit in the bag. But the interesting thing is, is that these things here uh, can be used um, for making a emergency sleeping bag. If you needed to, you vapor could barrier. vapor barrier. Now, another thing is how many times have you ever seen a tourist who's like, doesn't have a rain jacket. If you were in a situation and you needed to give someone else a rain jacket, you just oh, cut a oh, hole in it. You made a poncho. Hole. Right. Hey, right, right, right. And it'll idea. keep you warm. So two contractor bags folded up. Perfect little, perfect little size there for those. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a more, ex uh, a more expanded fire kit. Okay. And what I have in here are some of the, um, I believe they're called a tornado matches or a thunder match. Uh, I have some wax strips, which you can buy, which are easily uh, easily available. I believe those are Mountain Equipment Co-op. I have a military um, fuel for the stove, which are, are excellent fire starter. If you crumble them up, they literally, are, they, they, uh, they will start a fire. And then another thing that's available in here, which is an excellent little, little thing I picked up, is this thing called wet fire. Wet fire can be lit when it's pouring rain and it lasts for about um, a minute while you get your shavings together and stuff like that. Cool. Now I can't, this is something interesting. Um, I've been building fires my whole life mm -hmm. and something that I think is a skill, which is a perfect confidence building skill, yeah. is go out on a nice day, start a fire. Start a fire. Go out on a shitty day, start, start a fire. A fire. Go on YouTube, research how various people start fires. Yeah. Um, uh, it was very cute, but when I went camping last um, fall with somebody who I assumed had been camping before, I said, hey, I'll set up the shelters. Why don't you go take care of the fire? And I just went Whoop, and put it out of my mind. And when I came back after setting up both shelters. And did she have? Let me see, see, it's a she. He. <laughs> Yeah. He, she, 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 I gave her the whole kit. Okay. So she did have, the she kit. had the whole kit. And I'm just like, yeah, here you go, go start a fire. Okay. And, and she's I, never seen this kit before. She's like, okay. It seemed to me that there was a single log sitting there. And she was like this. <laughs> and what and are like the, the fire? Are, what are the wax strips? For? They, they're like wicks. Essentially, somebody's taken the genius idea of just taking old lamp wick, you know, old lamp, yep. the old lamp wick, yep. and uh, soak them in liquid bee, uh, bees wax. Yep. So you could literally melt old candles. Like uh, what I would say is a lot of us have the candles around and they never burn quite perfectly. The There's, yep. You're always left over with some wax. Yes. Put it on the pot on the stove and make your own. Buy a roll of the wax and just drape the, 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 the um, wicks through the wax. Okay. And make your own wax strips. Okay, so there's starter. a wick in there. Yeah, there's a Got wick and there's it. fabric in there. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then I have a little uh, um, uh, magnesium uh, fire starter strike, strike thing that makes sparks. So then you came to her, her, he, whomever, who was doing this by the log. And yeah. you said. Let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I said. So I said, let me do it. And um, <laughs> you're gonna so, waste all my fuel and my lighter. <laughs> so these Ooh, things, these things will, if you were to, this is a you shave off some of this okay. using your knife into yeah. the pile. So you've got your pile of stuff and you got your wet fire in there, and you got a little bit of your wax strip in there and some shavings. And then you just use this guy over and over again, and it and it will eventually start. And this is if wow, that's cool. This is this 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 will work. Look at that. But you've got matches, you've got fire starter, sure. you've got a lighter. This sure. is a real like, yes. holy shit. Like, like if all everything fails. fails. Right. Yeah. right. Precisely. Okay, so I'll move this fire stuff over here. Now we have some cash. Yeah. So this is a this is another uh thing. Is is it have some cash? I agree. Couldn't agree. Have more. some cash. And I have 150 bucks in here and um, taxi could be bus ticket, could be um, need to bribe somebody, could be anything. Um, uh, listen, uh, listen, are we, I need you to come over here and answer some questions. Um, really? Do I have to answer some questions? Mm -hmm. there's, there's gotta be something a girl can do. <laughs> you know? That's only, that's only worth like a hundred Americans. But... Right, right. 
<laughs> there's got to be some see but, you know it would that's a, it's like the thumbing and ride thing i would need to basically be pulling off hundreds <laughs> there's got to be something i can do um anyways i have, I have start. you do you have your tube so, top money start, okay whichever so that's fire <laughs> and money fire and money questions or skirts <laughs> okay, questions yeah uh gloves um i would highly recommend having a pair of decent warm gloves i managed to get lucky uh in the sense that you my gloves that i have um are leather palm mm -hmm. and they're also warm they're windstopper they're good for they're not uh they're not full winter gloves but believe me if your hands are chilly they're fine oh they're gonna be much better than nothing that's for sure. yeah and the great thing about it is is that i um let's see if i have some around here um, a pair of leather gloves, even a gardening set of gardening gloves would be fine. Okay. They don't have to be fancy gloves, but I recommend something with a leather palm. Yeah. And why do you think, so outside of being cold, why do you think you might run into using these? Uh, even if you're, even if you need to pull open, um, the door of a hot, uh, a car that's crashed and somebody's hurt inside, you want to have something that's leather, something that will protect your hands, even for a few seconds against heat. Um, if I needed to pull a fence up and help somebody through, I if I needed would, to yeah. climb climb yeah. something, right. uh, it, it's just okay. very handy to have leather palms. A lot Touch. of the Touch your hands. yeah, a lot of the man-made materials, unfortunately, uh, they don't hold up, and so having something with leather palms is helpful. Okay. Yeah. My little delicate hands. I like to keep them covered up from doing things, doing manly things. A rain jacket. Rain jacket. Uh, I won't pull it out, but over any rain jacket, what? Over and above the garbage bag. Correct. Yes, exactly. <laughs> over and above the garbage bag. But a rain jacket, a nice lightweight rain jacket would be very, very helpful. Okay. Uh, very helpful. And actually, it's not helpful. It's a, it's a must have. Well, um, especially here. Actually, where it sure. rains 300 days out of the year. The other thing is, is if I happen to be in my regular clothes. I'm civilian. Civilian clothes. When you're I can to be put a this on. And this will help so you blend into the woods. Out. It'll blend into the woods. If right. I have to. And, and maybe it might even be big enough for some people. Depending, you could probably cover your, not you. No, I was going to say you probably cover your pack with it. Oh, uh, you could. You could. Yeah, definitely. Like if that's all you had. If that's all you had. Exactly. But then. Um, so I, I definitely think a rain jacket um, is, a, is a handy thing. Yeah. And the other cool thing about these things, like, wow, there's a lot of little pouches and stuff in here. These pouches, if you're in a situation where somebody's, if they're handing out food, like mm. you, these little pouches are part of the kit, you well, know, that's interesting. it's not just, yeah. so it, it's, it's not just like, um, if some, if you, if you happen to go by an aid station or something like that, and they're handing out granola bars or whatever, mm -hmm. or something loose nuts or something like that, there you go. You've got something to put that stuff in. So a rain jacket, not to mention, I put this on a lot when I'm not, it's not raining. It's just an excellent windbreaker as well. Yeah. Okay, and it's folds so small. And it's it so is light super weight. small. You can't afford not to have it. Really. Exactly, it is really really small. And I gotta say, um, I don't know. If, I think if you had a giant ba bag and stuff, and you wanted to throw your full, you know, snowboarding Gore-Tex jacket in there, um, that's cool. But I would recommend finding something lightweight, even if it's at Walmart or yeah, you know, like um, the the synthetic uh down ones that really crush into it's really small they're almost as small as that really True. yeah so you can exactly you can get um uh combo jackets i happen to have we'll, we'll go into that when it's, it's at okay the bottom. and that would be good for us here as well when it's like cold or cool for a good portion of the year yes indeed okay rain jacket okay jacket next down. thing in here next thing in here Maps, Ooh. navigation. This is just for me, but this is how I do it. And this is my pouch and it contains all the paper maps from this area. Isn't that interesting? And it contains my, my compass. So topo maps. Yeah. Um, a lot of these topo maps, the photographs were taken. Again, this is for the environment that we're in. I'm gonna talk a little bit after I'm done explaining this about what to do in an urban environment. So topo maps, I can leave out my back door and be on trails that are on these maps because these photos were taken in the 70s and the 80s. They show all the old logging roads, most of them, that were active at that time or recently de decommissioned, and now they're trails. 
So they're on these maps. Oh, I need those. Yeah. Where do you get those? I or there's a I believe it's map. It's Canadian topo maps. Like it's a you just okay. have, do a search online for it. Cool. Uh, they used to sell them. They may still sell them at Mount and Co-op, but the one to fifty thousand, which is the ones that you want, one to fifty thousand topo maps for um, BC are available online, and they'll just mail them to you. Cool. Uh, compass. I use a Silver Ranger compass. It's because I what's it's what I learned on when I was a cadet when I was a kid. But a Silver Ranger compass or some kind of compass. Now, compasses intimidate people for some reason because they're just like they're some kind of they wizardry. Exactly. There's some kind of wizardry involved. Oh, there we, really isn't Google. wizardry. Pardon? Google. Yeah, YouTube will show you how to use these. Right. Um, YouTube will show you how to use these and um and uh, I highly recommend getting out there and actually Turn learning. Out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's a, also um, lots of YouTube videos on orienteering. So essentially, what you're doing in a survival situation is you're doing map and compass. You're orienteering, mm. which is a sport. Yeah. But the orienteering guys are doing it for fun, and girls are doing it for fun. You're be doing it in a survival situation. Basically, you're going to have your map folded out to your initial area of operation or the area that you're you're running or the area that you're hiding or whatever. And you need to be able to orient the map using your compass and be able to go, okay, all right, then that is over there. That is over there. You know, this is where we're going. Yeah. Um, even if you didn't know how to do that, if you knew in an urban situation that that place that we agreed we're going to meet at is Northeast of my house. Right. Yeah. Just go. Yeah. You know, and, and just keep walking. It's great. Especially if you know uh, a little bit of orienteering and map and compass, it's extremely helpful and fun. I know it sounds kind of goofy, but I love doing map and compass. Well, to add to that, yeah. we actually, Survival Chicks has a compass. It's not exactly this one. It's actually, um, it comes with a little pack and it's pretty cool. And we're going to do a giveaway on it very soon. That's cool. So that'll be fun. Yeah. And we'll talk more about how to use it. Yes, exactly. And I mean, it is, once you, when, uh, I remember, I mean, I learned Map and Compass when I was an early teen, um, but uh, it was like, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. I freaking hate this shit. Forget this. I'm just, forget it. I don't even care anymore. And then I was like, oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. And it was like a switch that went off in my head. And okay. all of a sudden it all made sense. Okay. So there will be a little bit of stuff. Ah, yeah, stupid. I'll just use my phone. Oh yeah. We'll put it in a fish tank. See how your phone works now. Right. You know, and, uh, and it's just fun. Go okay. to the, go, can, go uh, to a day picnic area with your friends, have a barbecue, all bring your map and compass and just learn how to use nice. it. That's like, a great idea. Just learn how to use your map and compass. Okay. And it's, like I said, it's fun. Doing it. All right. First aid. First well, aid, first small aid. Small little pack. It is, yeah. So this is the pack that I usually carry with me in my trail running bag. And this is the pack that I've had with me on a couple of occasions when I've come across people that are first on I'm first on the scene. And it's a little tiny pack that mm -hmm. I got from MEC and I just sewed a little Mount Red Cross on it. But it is extremely dense in what it can and what it carries. Okay. Um this almost would be this would almost warrant uh, its own video, to be honest with you. That's how Ooh. in depth this is. But we, I, I think it's important for people to have what they uh, need, um, and along with that, I think that it's important for people to have a little bit of training. Now, do you have to go off and take a uh, Navy SEAL? Uh, a combat trauma first aid course? No, you can just go and take a little first aid day course. My recommendations is what the, the situations that we're talking about resembles sports. We're talking, so I would recommend that you focus your education on sports injuries and injuries that can happen in the field, like sprains, cuts, okay. um, uh, 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 people banging their heads, broken bones, that right. kind of thing. Um, that's the kind of first aid I would focus on. Okay. Um, I've taken some pretty advanced first aid, but, um, and medical training. Uh, but I put this together based on like, what will I, what will I need if I'm in trouble or what will I need if somebody I come across is in trouble? 
As a matter of fact, I used this exact kit about six years ago uh, when I ripped my leg open um, about four kilometers from uh, the car on a trail run on Quadra Island. And um, it was very interesting because I've hurt myself before, obviously, but this was one of those situations where the, I, uh, the, the, I came around a corner, uh, there was a bridge crossing a stream. The geniuses who had done the trail maintenance um, on the trail system that I was on had used extruded diamond um, um, grid uh, to keep to add traction to the to the um, the the bridge. Okay. And I came around the corner, and the the two bottom stairs were obviously just slick with moss and and goo and just forest slippery stuff. And unfortunately, the the diamond extruded metal that they had used to, get to add grip grip to the surface of this deck. They had let the 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 edge of it was extended past the edge of the uh, the the bridge, right. essentially creating a saw blade. And Ooh. so I I came around the corner on this slipped thing, full it. full tilt on on the hit my bottom step, slipped as I was bringing my other leg up, and I wiped out. I thought I banged my leg, um, and I hit the deck of the 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 bridge and ended up in the stream under the bridge and was they're just completely kind of like not unconscious, but dazed Shocked. by the whole yeah, yeah. situation. It's like, wow, that sucked. So I'm wet and all this whole horrible crap. Right. And, um, and then you I got up, I was like, Whoa, man. And now my legs throbbing. I'm like, Oh man, this sucks, whatever. So I had to look down and I, I looked and I was, everything seemed fine. None of my clothing was torn or ah. anything. And I, I just, I saw this little egg on my shin and I touched it. And it was at that moment that the, tear and my tights the my running tights that I was wearing opened up and it just started bleeding like crazy so I rolled my leg up and my shin had about a three inch long muppet mouth of torn open leg right down to the bone I could see my bone and it was horrible and so by that time I'm like wow this is really interesting so I know uh enough about medical stuff I'm like oh wow so this is what the early stages of shock feels like. Yeah. I bet I'm going to start slurring my speech. I bet I'm going to get really distracted. I bet I'm going to get really cold. And sure, I'm like, but you got to actually do something, man. You're you actually going go into now. shock. You gotta go now. So I used this kit to um, put myself back together again so that I could run back to the car. Wow. Four yeah. kilometers back to the car. Hey? Yeah, it wasn't that far. But I mean, four, <laughs> four kilometers isn't that far. But it's not that far. It, but you know, interestingly enough, is one of the things that they talk about in medical training is that um, to talk it through, because that's how you remember. Yeah. I, yeah. So talk it through. So I was there with my friend's dog Fisher, um, and I was treating Fisher like she was the nurse, and I was telling her what I was going to do next, and how I was going to get do next, and what I was going to do next, and what I was going to do next. And she was really just like cool. It was just. She wasn't, she just stayed with me. She, that dog knew I was injured. Yeah. Anyways. So I was able to put myself back together then. Wow. Nice little long-winded story, but that's cool. Anyways. Um, do you want me to break this down? Uh, it's up to you. Okay. It's going to be like a three hour long oh, video, no. but no, not this. No, it, 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 no it's just going to add some time. No. Uh, no, I'll, uh, I'll go through it. I'll basically go through it very quickly. So pills, painkillers, Advil, uh, antihistamines, very important. I've been in a situation before where I got stung in the mouth mm -hmm. by a wasp and all of a sudden, before I knew it, my tongue was filling my whole mouth. Well, like that's a, a good point. Hey? But I took a handful of antihistamines, chewed them up yep. and swallowed them like a bunch. Yep. And, and it went, it went away enough for me to not die. Yeah. So I get um, super like blown up and weird with, um, with uh, wasps things. Yes. And so I have a little kit that I carry around with me. And sometimes it's been too long since I've had a sting. So I kind of forget about the kit, but the kit has all my homeopathics in it. Same sort of thing. If I, I get like um, a puncture wound, I've got a homeopathic in there. If I get, um, you know, a stung, if I get ABC, whatever, I've got a homeopathic in there. And usually I just bring that everywhere with nice. us. I would do because I was stuck without it, not thinking that I would get stung by a wasp and it just sucked. I had to yeah. leave the party early, you know? <laughs> yeah, I had to leave the party early. It was no far doubt. away from home, like hours away, and yeah. I had to leave days early. So, oh, that sucks. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, whatever you need, this is a good time to mention pharma. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
You just mentioned pharma. For me, it's so, homeopathics because right. that's what that's what I do. But also, I would I would bring some Advil when you got something like that's um, acute that needs to be dealt with right now. Right, one hundred percent. Yeah. Whatever you need, whatever that medical thing is, rather than going to a long list of stuff. Yeah. Whatever you need to be taken care of, that's what yeah. you should have with you. Yeah. Um, I have some uh, safety pins. I won't give explanations on everything. I have some more. Uh, salt tablets. Yeah, of the electrolytes. I have taken two small pencils and I have wrapped about six feet of duct tape around those pencils so that I have a little bit of duct tape. Duct tape is good for um, uh, securing splints around yep. fingers okay. and whatever you might use duct tape for. Okay. These are called vet wrap. Vet wrap are available at any equestrian store for about three dollars and fifty cents each. They are amazing for, for, for sprains and for yep. binding yeah, bandages. You don't need a, one of those metal things no. to hook them together. I don't even stick. have one of those. They're great. Yeah, I don't even have one of those. Those are the, These are the shit. They are the best. Yeah. And then inside here, I have um, oh, some scalpel blades and um, I have some uh, flossy sticks. Everybody knows Everyone has floss had that thing teeth. stuck in their teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has had that thing stuck in their teeth. When they're in emergency scalpel situation. blades, you never know, right? You never know. I've right. had, I've, I, I, I had, was in a class with a guy who had um, his eye uh, leave his ocular <gasps> circuit, uh, like his ocular cavity, on a mountain bike um, okay. accident. Anyways, okay. so you can imagine it's that one. That above, probably sucked. It's okay. <laughs> uh, a little bit more Advil and some more medical tape. Most importantly, crazy glue. Look how small these are. So crazy glue is, I have used this more times than I can say for suturing somebody up and for suturing myself up. Ooh. You, I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. I have used crazy glue. Sure. I'm not sure if this is a rumor, but apparently it's, it's nearly identical to the surgical glue they use in surgery. Probably. But if you've got a tear yep. or you got a little flap or you got something going on, even if your gear needs repairing or whatever, Ooh, crazy yeah. glue. Hey, great idea. Earplugs. <clears throat> Earplugs, I just put them in here uh, because they're small and everything like that. Could be that you're in a loud place and you want to catch a disease. You know, you want to you want to catch some some sleep, you know? But like honestly, for me, I get really, really cold ears and it sounds really like lame and stupid, but I get really cold ears and I start to get like an inner ear infection if I don't keep uh -huh. my ears covered and I can be summertime, even if there's a little bit of a breeze or if I'm doing exercise, those are the two exercise and a little bit of a breeze. And it's going to get so cold that I'm going to start having like a headache right. and a ear infection. So this would save my life wow. in, in many different yeah. instances. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, who knows? I mean, you could use, well, you, I mean, even if you, if you had a puncture wound, you know, you, and you had to stuff something in there to, st you know, to stop the bleeding. I, I think it's important when you're putting these kits together to think of multiple uses for things and what else can I use that for and ask yourself those questions. Um, so do you want to go traveling? Exactly. You just want to keep as minimal. When I used to back in the day, it's never going to happen again, but it'll happen again. Know. I'll carry one of these instead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, a pair of scissors uh, for cutting bandages and for cutting things. And the rest of this is all just bandages. Bandages. Yeah. Bandages okay. and more crazy glue. Cool. All right, cool. Well, that was fun. That's a, that's a, okay. good, that's a good little um, first aid kit. I yeah. can handle that. Yes, and I think that... It is, it'd be hard for anything bigger than that. That's enough to keep somebody stable until help comes. And that's, yeah. And that's like really minimal. And easy, it is minimal. You know, I don't feel like I'm overwhelmed with that. Right. Mm -hmm. The reason the thing is like, oh, you don't have a triangular bandage in there. You don't have a sling in right. there. You know, a lot of stuff. Well, I do. It's right here. Oh, right. Yes. I have a sling. I yes. have all that stuff. And worst case scenario in a situation, you can actually take a shirt and actually pin it up to somebody's shoulder. And now their arm is in a sling. Okay. You know, I had, it came across, across somebody in the forest who had dislocated their shoulder and that's what we ended up doing. Okay. So. You happen to get yourself into these situations where people need you. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know. <laughs> I, what it is, is that the people go to the Call forest. Oh, Richard. <laughs> But what it is, is that people go out um, and just assume that the same level of safety is applied when they leave their houses, when they're sitting at home on their couch. And if they just go out 
unprepared because um, uh, uh, their favorite YouTuber or Instagram influencer goes running in a, a pair of short shorts in a tent in a tube top um, that they should all go running in a pair of that. And, and it, that isn't the case. You've just literally run into a mountain um, wearing what you think you should wear when you're running on a treadmill at the gym. Mm-hmm. It's, it's ridiculous. Right. It's ridiculous. It's wild out there. <laughs> it's wild out there. It's wild, <laughs> literally wild. Um, okay. So now, uh, in this little kit, I have all of my things for charging my stuff. Okay. I have a, 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 a external battery pack and all the cables to charge all my electronics. Uh-huh. I have a couple of backup batteries okay. and I have my covert headset for my radio. Yeah. Wow, cool. This is feeling I'm feeling prepared here. You should be. Yeah. Oh, I am. Okay, food. Food, food is up to you. I have three um, backpacking meals. I'll just open it up so you can see inside here. I have three backpacking meals, a couple of different bars. I have this product called Trail Wind, which is designed for trail runners, um, and it is a full carbohydrate, um, electrolyte, um, caffeinated endurance fuel, tra- trail wind. Um, I also have a, a, a bunch of this for trail running, uh, which is called Scratch Labs, and it's, a, it's an energy chew. It's got all the salts and stuff that you need. Okay. Um, and I have- Is a, it totally disgusting? No, they're delicious. Oh. No, this stuff is delicious. This, okay. This is in a bottle of water. This stuff is really tasty. Okay. Um, and it does work. Like, I have been bonking on trail, on, tra- on hikes and on trail runs. And I've had this, and it's it, it gives you, like, wings. Man. Wow, cool. Um, no Red Bull needed here. I have a couple of uh, bars, and I do like the old-fashioned. I have one of these just for nostalgia's sake. I have the old <laughs> crunchy uh, Nature Valley Crunchy Bar in there. For nostalgia's sake. What's what's this? Well, that's the backpacking food. Okay, so is it pad, real cheap pad thai? Yeah, and this is uh, pepper. But yeah, this is another thing. Go is out. it, like, an MRE kind of? It, it's water. better. It's better than that. It's MREs better. are not, kind of not, not, not. I've eaten enough no, MREs in no. my life. Okay. No good. I don't like, like freeze them. Dried? This Add is freeze water. dried. So you boil up some water in yep. your in your stuff. Mm-hmm. You pour it into the pouch. Yeah. It's oh, actually okay. got the measuring stuff right on the side oh, of the pouch. Okay. And you seal it back up again and give it a few minutes, like it says on the back. The instructions are all on here. And then you pour the contents into your pot. And now you're eating a, a delicious meal. And I would. Why wouldn't you just pour the contents? Into your pot. Well, be they well. I guess you can do that, but okay. these are designed for. Eat. You can either eat them out of the pot. The, right. You could do that, but you but can't. Designed to make it only easy once. I would say that you, once you've done this and it's done, it's it's steeped in here and it's done all of its rehydrating and all that stuff because it's designed to have to be be reconstituted. I guess is the yes. right word in the bag. But once it's been reconstituted, you can either eat well, it out. of you see, my point here is that I am like finicky and yeah. I feel like eating out of a bag. What is the bag made out of? Am I going to get some type of foil? I believe, That's honestly, I, I think that it. this is BPA free. And I'm like, um, mm. It's designed to be cooked in, let me see here. I've only ever cooked it in, because that's not like, a, these are not, this isn't something I eat at home. Uh, this, right. is, this is something I I eat when I'm out uh, sure. on long backpacking trips. Yeah. Um, Interestingly enough, pepper beef with rice. Mm-hmm. Let stand for 12 minutes, stir again, and serve. I believe that it's meant to be cooked in the bag because the, the bag is foil inside, like it's a metal inside. And, um, you know, this is actually <laughs> Jesus aluminum foil. Aluminum you know, interesting. Okay, so this is a good, uh, this is a good example of, uh, of, um, thinking outside the box. So here's what I would do. Uh, practice makes proficient, right? Mm-hmm. So these are inexpensive. I think they're 10 bucks each. Yep. Um, so you're going to go to the, uh, you're going to go to the park. You're going to go to Bunsen Lake. You're going to go to the park with your friends and have a barbecue and practice your map and compass. Can this be cooked tra- traditionally by jumping up? Yeah. Practice. Yeah. Like practice this. Um, these are designed for people who are out in the deep alpine to pour hot water in and just eat sure. right out of the bag. Yeah. However, can they be cooked in a pot? Well, Probably. you're going to find out and let yep. everybody know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but these things are good. And they're cal- what's great about them is the calorie counts on here. 
640 calories, okay. not because you're trying to lose weight, but because you're trying to keep the calories on when you're actually out in the bush. Sure. Right. So you're running for your life. You're going to burn probably 4,000 calories a day. Yeah. Easy. Uh, when people are hiking all day long, they burn between four and a half and 5,000 calories a day. Holy and, uh, Christmas. My size, I need 2,500 calories just to stay at where yeah. I'm at. Yeah. You know, like if I just laid down on the floor from morning till night, 2,500 <laughs> calories is what I need to live. Right. Um, okay. So that's the food. Okay. No questions right. there. So we got the food, we got the water, we're staying warm and dry. We've got our emergency kit. We got some admin material already, some communications. You got it all. And all of this will be available on the list. On the list. On the, on the list, which are uh, the PDFs. This is your... Um, puffy coat. Oh, that's your puffy coat. My, micro puffy. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. You already so have one. I already have wow. one. So this is just a micro Look puffy. Look at that. Micro puffy. Uh, I'm not going to pull that out. No, no, um, no. But it's a little micro puffy for putting Excellent. on. It's, Super lightweight. It's down, and I believe I got it at Costco for 25 bucks. Oh, gosh. Amazing. Okay, so there's that. And if it's not waterproof, you could definitely put your little water you, you can. thing on yeah. the top. This would this fits underneath that for yeah. sure. That's excellent. I thought it was gonna maybe be a sleeping bag. So then I have these things go together. So because of what I do, and I have been in this situation before where I've been like, oh, looks like I'm spending the night. Um is I have a, um, a tarp. This is a tarp. I will not unfold this. Okay. But it's roughly about an eight by eight or nine by nine tarp. Okay. With reinforced grommets on the corners. Okay. And in here, I have uh, about maybe about 80 feet of paracord and some other cord. Okay. So this is my shelter. Oh. So you can make an eight frame yeah, shelter yeah, out of yeah. this. You can make it, uh, you can make a lean to shelter out of this. You could wrap yourself in it if you wanted to. You could, could. wrap yourself and a partner in, in this if you needed to. Could you make a um... hammock? Yes. Uh, no, uh, you could. I don't know how strong it would be to make a hammock. Uh, I honestly don't. I wouldn't say that I would recommend that uh, because it is uh, not that reinforced. I don't think that these tabs are very reinforced. Okay. We used to make hammocks a long time ago um, out of military ponchos by... Um, taking a stone in, in, in the corner and you put a stone in the corner and then you tie your rope on so that it can't pull through the, st the stone can't pull through where you've tied. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust these, okay. but you could do something similar with this. You could tie a knot in the fabric itself and then tie to that, but I wouldn't trust these grommets. Um, although they're pretty beefy, but my other okay. thing is like, I, we keep, I'm going to keep using this barbecue with your friends reference. The other thing you're going to do on that day when you go out with your friends and have the barbecue and practice your map and compass and see if you can make a meal in a pot okay. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. See if you can start a fire yes. and all that jazz is take a couple hours and learn how to make a simple, simple uh, tarp shelter. shelter. Okay. There's not much to it. Yeah. The most important thing to remember is that when you're going off your corners is to go off on a 45 degree angle of your, of your corners so that everything is pulled super tight. Okay. And one of the best shelters, easiest shelters that you can make is you, um, you go off the corners of your tarp and then you run a line through somewhere near the middle and you just have a little awning and you, yeah. yeah and now you're dry. Yeah. And this, this, I've used this before in a situation where I've been caught in a absolute deluge downpour on a trail run type situation where I need to just get out of the freaking rain now. And uh, I just made something that was three feet off the ground and just got in underneath it until it passed. So it's very helpful, very handy. Cool. So shelter. It's one of these nice slick tarps, very foldable. Yeah. Again, very affordable too. Okay, cool. Like extremely affordable. Um, so then we're getting near the end here. I think we may actually be at the end of that. So the very, 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 very last thing. And this is only because I, um, I have training and um, I, I do want to be a little more, more prepared is this is a much more expanded first aid kit. So before you told me you were in cadets, uh -huh. what else did you do? 
Uh, I just um, so like there there was a time from about two thousand and eight to about two thousand and fifteen, maybe something like that, uh, where I did some training in the states um, and uh, did some firearms training in the states, did some tactical training down south, as well as um, uh, uh, was a director of. Um, a group of people that brought in instructors into Canada to to um, to uh, train in uh, tactical training. So that's a lot more than cadets. Yeah. Mm. So that was fun. Love that part out earlier. And then I did my um, my EMR uh, training back in 2019, just EMR. before uh, emergency medical responder okay. training. I did that in, back in 2019. Wow. Through a company called Firematics, which was fantastic. Um, again, wow. just skills that. I think are really important. That's Medical training important. is so important. Super important. So any, yeah. So, um, so in all those, in all the various courses that I trained and also facilitated the instructors coming to Canada and training us and so on and so forth. Um, one component uh, in all of those courses was um, medical. Medical was always a part of those things. Um, we, uh, um, you're trying to train yourself to inoculate yourself against the stress of, you know, having bad things going on. And now you need to have at least visualized it or practiced it so that when it does happen, um, it's more second nature, it's more second nature. Exactly. Uh, and one of the things that we heard repeatedly when I was doing that training was, is that you, 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 us, we all, doesn't matter how cool you think you are, doesn't matter, no matter how many jokes, you know, how many cool stories you can tell is that you will, only rise to the highest level level of training that you've mastered. Sure. It doesn't matter if you read a book on right. being an a, a ninja, you are not going to rise to being a ninja if you're attacked on the street. Mm -hmm. you, need, you, need, you must practice, right. practice, practice. Yep. And by and practice, that's the barbecue. The barbecue. Going out right. practicing with your tools. Right. It's not enough to have the tools if you don't know how to use them. Right, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to take my, my, my dog's charm necklace off. <laughs> Give me a second. Give me a sec. There we go. Now we're not going to have any jingle jangles in the background. Um, okay. So then, um, uh, I, so I'll, I'll just crack this open and I won't, I won't go into a lot of stuff, but I, I again, this is just, um, uh, this allows me to do everything from, uh, basic stuff to, if I had to, if I had to do, um, sucking chest wound or, um, wow. or some kind of, um, if I had to do a tracheotomy, I, I wouldn't, oh I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to, but I could I um, definitely want to be with Richard. If I get injured somewhere, <laughs> he's coming. Um, to yeah. So breaks and sprains and cuts and stuff are more likely. Um, so that's what happens. You know that, right? So the guys upstairs, whoever's upstairs, I don't know who it is, but they're up there and they're looking down on us and they're like, hey, look what this guy's doing. Hey. Well, the important ones that aren't supposed to get into too much trouble, are not. it's not their time to die yet, okay? They're like, well, you're going into the bush unprepared, you dumbass. Call in Richard. Hey, George, bring your man over here. Get Richard on the, get Richard on the trail. Make sure Richard <laughs> wants to go hiking today and head him over in that direction. Yeah, and then right. Richard's like, oh my God, this guy needs me. Oh, well, like as if that wasn't planned. Yeah. That's why you run in. Do you think I've ever run into people who are injured? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it happens to me. But mind no. you, I, I think it's because I do a lot of stuff that's, um, a, uh, that is, uh, I don't know, the average, it depends. It's all relative. Um, like I have been trail running regularly since 2004 ish, 2005 ish. Right. So, uh, that takes me. And of course, every time you get a little bit better at something, you want to go a little further, you want to go a little harder, whatever. And it, it takes you into areas where people sometimes go because they saw a YouTube video and they thought going for a hike or whatever, it was just like, sure. You know, just nothing at all. Yeah. I, I, I'm just, I've only just mentioned the medical emergencies. I've been on hikes before where I have been completely taken almost like we're physically I'm exhausted. I'm already fit. I'm a buddy and a mine and I, we were going up um, the backside of Dias Vista over by Bunsen Lake. And um, we came upon a out of shape, overweight kid and his out of shape, overweight dad uh, who had a Safeway bag and a two liter of Dr. Pepper and some chips. And like, this is a hike or, or trail run that I've done 20 times easily. And like, it's one you need to prepare for. And the, and the kid had literally was telling his dad that he was stopped. Like, that's it. 
Like he wasn't going any further. Like that was it. And they were almost equidistant from the, the, right. the beginning or the end. So, uh-huh. and I remember kind of having a chuckle asking if they were okay. And the dad said, no, like I'm not okay. And uh, we're not okay. And, and I just had to have a little chit chat with the kid, like where I was like, you know, this is, un- it's unfortunate, but I mean, you're halfway to the car this way and you're halfway to the car this way. If you go this way, if you can push through, then you'll have done the whole hike as you know, and you, you can say that you did the whole hike. Um, and, uh, but I had to lay it out. I'm like, no, nobody's coming. Like there's nobody coming to get you. There's no chopper coming. There's no, there's nobody's going to come with the bus. To, Your dad can't carry you. You, you guys are going to have to go. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a real eye opener that sometimes people will go out and, um, do stuff and do stuff they, that's just way beyond their right, abilities. Yeah. And also knowing when to say, holy shit, man, I gotta, I, I gotta go back yeah. before it gets too late. Right. Yeah. I'm actually doing that hike next weekend. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's yeah. a good one. Yeah, it's a Have good one. Have you done it? Yeah. How long does it take to go around, personally, if you're not running? Um, it depends on the way you go, but we used to go... Or how many uh, kilometers is it? It's about 18. Okay. 8, 19. Okay. Um, if you go around the lake, which I don't know if they've replaced the, the cable bridge yet, but if you go around the lake and go, you know, up and over the DSVs to come down where the cable bridge used to be, where the suspension bridge used to be, they may have a temporary bridge there, but if you kind of start at the parking lot, go up, go across the ridge, which is super beautiful, Dias Vista, 10 views in Spanish. Um, uh, it's beautiful. There's only about six views now because three or four of them have overgrown since the trail was cut. So you can't see as much, but you can see all the way to Deep Cove and everything. It's fantastic. Oh, wow. And then you come down the mountain on the other side where the, the, the uh, suspension bridge used to be and then come back to your car this way. So it's like, Depends on how you do it. It can be 12 and a half or it can be 18, but it's um, the fastest I ever did. It was two and a half hours running. And then the, the, the average time would be probably like three and a half if you're relatively fit, relatively. But I believe the grandma time that they give on, give you on the, yeah. on the handout is yeah. something like six and a half or something oh, like okay. that, but it's, it's a good hike. Anyway, Perfect. Excellent. we digress. Looking forward to it. I'm going to bring my pack. Oh, good job. Yeah. <laughs> good job. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, the just bring it. Together. Just bring it. Don't use any of the stuff. Just bring all just, the stuff. Just putting it on, hiking, and then you can be like, go with it. people go by. You can be like, excuse me, do you know how to use this? Oh, sorry. Excuse me, do you, do you know need how to use toilet paper? No. Yes. no. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I just need some help with my life. Um, uh, anyway, <laughs> so um, let me just uh, quick take a quick sec here and see if I've uh, I've covered everything. I think I here. think that you have. I know, but let me just have a look at. The last part here. You can always cut out me. We're also talking about mindset. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Actually, we, we've touched on it, but yeah, let's talk about mine. Um, so finally, all this stuff is um, is no good if we don't use it. And so I don't know how to use pa- it. part of uh, the fun. And I have to say, this all ties into mindset and visualization and all that. And let's let's make sure that I differentiate between, because a lot of folks out there, including myself, uh, subscribe to the idea of manifestation. Mm -hmm. Uh, Visualizing and manifestation are two different things. Mm -hmm. Visualizing a a situation where you may have to help yourself or help someone else is not the same as making it happen. You're not willing it into existence. I believe that you are just simply sharpening your mind and getting, getting your, you're actually, it's working for you. You're not, you're not willing this disaster into existence. You're just simply preparing yourself mentally. Um, Like, I think it's important to mentally prepare uh, for any situation, even just running little scenarios in your head. You do not want the first time that you're thinking about something is to be the second that you're presented with it. Right. And then, like I mentioned, using this stuff, Going through it regularly, don't just make a bag and stick it in your car mm. and say, I'm good to go. Because yeah. what you, what I would recommend is at least once a season, realistically, right. go through it. Yeah. Because what diff, what good is it if it's summer and you've got all your winter gear yep. in your bug out bag? Sure. What good is it if it's winter and you've got your short shorts and your tank top in your bug yep. out bag? I mean, in the summertime, I will be adding a pair of shorts to this because if I'm out in a pair of long pants on a hot day, I want to put my shorts on, you know, like it's just, 
you just stay on top of it okay. as well as any opportunity that you have to go for a walk at night. How long does my headlamp last? Mm. How long do I have to charge my headlamp in order to make it last? Right. How there's no law against practicing again, uh, these using these in the, in the bush. Okay. Fire one off. How far does it go before it goes bang? What's the distance I need before bears closing on me? That's a very you, good idea. You know, fire one off. Yeah. Um, check your batteries a lot. Very I, I can't idea. tell you how many times I've checked yeah. my batteries and they're all covered in white fuzz. And like, oh god. Right. And just making sure that stuff is still good. Like sometimes we don't use these yeah. for a really long time and yeah. they're all soggy or something happens. Yeah. Them. Yeah, exactly. So I typically will go through my bag once every season. Okay. So like you know, spring, summer, fall, uh, and winter. And um, I'll go through all the stuff. Like I, I, uh, I went through my bug out bag. I, I was just, you know, work and life and everything like that. I hadn't gone through my bug out bag for a while. And I realized I hadn't checked the expiration date on my dehydrated food. And I had dehydrated food from 20, uh, 2012 in my, in my bug out bag. Now I would eat that. I think it'd be fine. I think I would be fine too. But a lot of people would be like, oh. if it was packaged properly, it would oh. probably be fine. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, yeah. like, I'm going to rather die. Um, I would definitely eat that. Uh, practice communication with your, with your friends, um, build a fire, cook your food, all the stuff, just practice makes proficient. Mm -hmm. This is great. The mindset and just know that, Ooh, this is a, this is a, this is a, this is an important one. This is, this is when it comes to mindset is absolutely. If I was going to give anybody advice on mindset, you must remove any thought of being a victim out of your head. Oh, I like that. You are, you just remove it from your mindset. I like that. Um, you will survive. There will, there is no, I hope I survive. There is no, I'm going to try. Literally, there is no try. Right. Okay. There is only do. And um, just let preparing yourself empower you. That's how I would go about this. I have, you know, I have used every iteration of survival gear I've had in cadets. We used to have uh, our survival belts that we used to put together and stuff and just going through it and sharing information. Hey guys, did you see this? Hey, did you see this? Hey, this is what I'm using. Do you think that maybe, you know, why don't we all use this? That's another thing is if you're in a network of people, um, the same thing with um, the same thing would go if we were in a network of people where we were in a situation where we were using firearms. You know, standardization of gear means that I can mm. I can give you a gas canister. You can give me a gas canister. You can give me flares for your pen flare. Right. We can share. We can and, share. And if I know what I have, mm-hmm. obviously there will be little tweaks. Like I mentioned that, you know, like somebody might have a different scarf. Somebody might have different gloves or whatever. But if the gear, if the essential gear is standardized, then you always know that that person has one. Right. Let's say your raft goes over. Let's say the, the bridge that you're on collapses. Let's say somebody goes down an avalanche. Let's say somebody, something happens and, uh, you know, uh, the car burns and only one of us was able to get a pack. Like, you, you know, what's in the pack. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it, it, it's just your mindset and the survival mindset starts with, um, I'm going to do everything I can to survive. Yeah. And that's, and there, and not be a victim. And that can be tough, especially if you're in an urban environment and you're extremely used to being able to go and get dinner out from the corner uh, or go and get your morning pour over every morning. Or, you know, if, if you're just kind of comfy in that environment um, and all of a sudden that environment is no longer functioning, you need to, uh, start being more self-reliant. Yeah. Tough. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So for my hike next weekend, for example, I don't have all of this gear, so I'm certainly not going to take all of this, but I'm going to incorporate what we've talked about and definitely take some aspects of this that relate best for me. That's a good idea. Put them in a bag. And then I'm also going to see how much weight I can carry in my bag that, you know, feels Good that I'm not totally bogged down with going, oh my God, this yeah. is way too heavy for me to 20, 20 to 25 pounds is what I would recommend. 20, 25 yeah. pounds. Okay. Because that's manageable. How much do you think this weighs? Uh, less than that. Really? Yeah. It's, it's, oh, pro- wow. it's probably tickling 20. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's okay. um, 20 pounds is you can run with 20 pounds if you had to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, 20 pounds is not that heavy. It's easy okay. to grab with one hand. Um, like it, it's just, it, it, 20 pounds is reasonable as well as it's a reasonable 
uh, weight for a backpacking bag. Like if you're just going on a day hike, um, if you're going on an overnight, um, 30 pounds for 35 pounds, uh, potentially. But when I go ultralight hiking in the summertime, my bag is 28 pounds. Yeah. I'm sure I've carried a lot heavier than that backpacking. That's around the number one mistake when people go to do a West Coast trail. <sighs> and my shit. Yeah. <laughs> It's too, it's the unfortunate. West Coast trail, yeah. yeah. Or like, like I know people that have done the West coast trail where they, and I'm for, and this is not me making fun. It's more just an observation where I can learn from their mistakes. It's an yeah. opportunity to learn, but it is, it is, there is an amusing aspect to it. When you tell the story, like somebody decides they're going to go on a, um, like a, a, a relationship building uh, hike with their partner and they don't go for any practice hikes. They do everything that YouTube tells them to. They both have 45 pound packs. And um, now they're on a, a hike with an overpacked pack that weighs a ton with sore feet, ankles, blisters. And now they're out there with their spouse that they're trying to basically get closer to. And now they're throwing their gear in the bush. And yelling at each other. <laughs> yeah. And yelling at, yeah. you know. Why would you carry me? Anyways. Yes. <laughs> so anyway. So oh, yeah, this is great. constantly tweaking your stuff, constantly going through it. Do I need this? Do I need this? What can I lose? That's one of the things that I like to do is when I, when I was packing my ultralight bag for the summer for going backpacking is like, what can I take out of here? What, like right down to cutting the handle in half on my, my toothbrush. Like I was like, I don't want to carry all this stuff. I totally get it, man. Yeah. When I go traveling and I'd have little, like I'd use up some stuff. I was like, oh, great. One supplement pill used. One less yeah. pill in my bag. Yeah. 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 I count the things I exactly. can get rid of, you know? Exactly. It's crazy, but cool. This is great. I really appreciate you taking the time to show me all yeah, of this, fun. show us all of this today. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. And I could uh, take you through it. Like I said, it's different for everybody. So um, if we wanted to have more information or if we wanted to contact you, where would we find you? That is a good question. Um, I was just speaking with you at the beginning of this about starting a Instagram uh, page, um, just to show a little kind bit of, of my stuff that I do when I'm hiking and so on and so forth. Yeah. So I, what do we agree on? Hang on a second. What was it? <laughs> it's called, uh, strong and strong. strong underscore and underscore ready, strong and ready. And there's nothing there right now, <laughs> but over the next little while, I'll start putting some stuff on there. And if Survival you want to read, skill stuff, yeah. Send me a message. Uh, send me a message. I'll throw some screen grabs of this on there and cool. everything and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get started, but yeah. Or just reach out to you and then you can reach out to me. Yeah. Yeah. That would be cool. Okay. Well, that's excellent. Yeah. This is excellent. Indeed. <laughs> I'm glad I could help. Thank you so much for taking the time and hopefully we're going to do that barbecue soon and you guys can do some of this on your own. Nice. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Adios, everybody. <laughs> Bye, everyone.